Hey everyone, in today's video we are going to learn all about the React Use Effect Hook. Now the React Use Effect Hook is one of the most important things to know in React and for this video if you aren't familiar with the React lifecycle of a component you should check out my last video because it's important to know how the lifecycle of a component works before we look at the Use Effect Hook which is why I made that video first. We are also going to look at how to make Axios requests within the Use Effect Hook in order to get data from APIs in your application. And this is going to be something super important for the next couple of videos where we actually make a little project with everything that we have learned so far in this React course. Now, if you are not subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button. Leave a comment if you find value in this video. I read every single comment and I can't tell you how much it helps with the YouTube algorithm. But let's jump straight into it. So before the React components uh, were all functional, they used to be class-based components. And when they had class-based components, they had three main lifecycle components that you would use throughout your components. One was called the component did mount, one was called the component did update, and one was called the component will unmount. And as you can imagine, the three different things a component can do, the three main life cycles, is it will first mount, it will first update, and then it will unmount after you choose to not show the component anymore. And as you can see, each single one of these, and let me zoom in a bit so you can see it easier, every single one of these uh, update functions was pretty much made to run on each of those lifecycle methods. So as soon as your component mounted, you would run a component in mount. As soon as your component updated, no matter how many times it updated, the component did update would run. And finally, when your component was about to be unmounted and no longer shown on the application, it would run the component will unmount function. Now the use effect can act as all three of these functions and you can have multiple use effects. So you can decide how you want each one of those use effects to run. Now I have a little example set up and it's the same example from the last video. And essentially what we have here is a very simple application to illustrate how use effect works. So we have an application and then we have a counter component and this button will control whether or not the counter counter component is rendered in or not. So every time I click this counter component, the counter will render in and it will go through a component did mount. When I click increment the counter, it will go through a component did update. And when I click hide, it will go through a component will unmount. Now let's look at the use effect and see how to set every single one of these situations up. So the first thing about the use effect is you have to go ahead and import it from React. Note that it is not the default import just like React is. So you have to wrap it around your squiggly braces just like you would with the use state hook. Now as you can see here, I have the most basic form. Essentially, the use effect takes two parameters. Number one is a function and number two is an array. Now, the first thing we're going to focus on is this function. So you can see here, it's just a regular arrow function that doesn't take any parameters unless you want it to, which is a more complex example. But for now, let's just focus on this. This specific use effect will act as a component did mount. I can go ahead and console log the use effect ran. And if I were to go ahead and save that and refresh our application and open up console, you can see here when I open the counter, the use effect will run. When I increment the counter, the use effect will not run. And when I hide the counter, the use effect will not run again. This is because this specific use effect will act as a component did mount. And the reason for that is the second parameter that you see here in the use effect, which is the array, will tell you when the use effect should run. If you simply pass in an empty array, that tells the use effect you only want it to run when the first render is. And after that, because the array is empty, it will not rerun and it will not be dependent on anything else happening. Now, let's make the exact same use effect, but instead of, um, let's, and let's console log this out because we already know what it does. Let's just console the whole thing out. And instead of just leaving nothing in the array for this second use effect, let's go ahead and add our count variable from our counter into here. Now, if I were to go ahead and refresh the application, if I click show counter, you will see it still runs on component did mount. But now if I were to increment the count, you will see that it runs every other time as well. And this is an equivalent to a component did update. 
And note that the use effect will always run on component mount no matter what. Um, whether or not you have it as a component did update or a component did mount and let's uh or i think for the did mount it's actually called let's see um yeah did mount did update and will unmount so um this one will act as a component did update because we are passing in a variable that our use effect depends on and it will only recall this use effect if the variable and you can have multiple variables in the array, by the way, if the variable in this array update. For example, if I were to have a count two, so let's say, oops, count two and set count two equals use state, and we'll set this one to zero as well. So now we have a second count variable. And if I were to, for example, like let's make a second button, that says like increment count two, and I made the setter for count two, you'll see here, if I open it up and I increment count two, the use effect will not run because the only thing in the array is count. But if I were to also add count two, and let's go ahead and refresh this and open it again, you will see if I increment count one, the re original count, it will update. And if I were to increment count two, oops, it will also update. Um, I'm not too sure why it stopped updating here. Um, I think that might just be a bug. Oh, it is because I, <laughs> I've i been setting set count to count plus one when it should be count two plus one. There we go. So now if we were to try that whole thing again, I go ahead and show it. I increment the count and I increment count two and you will see. The reason it didn't update with regular count is because we were setting it to the same value and therefore the value didn't update and therefore the use effect didn't run. So that's actually a pretty interesting use case to know about. Now the final example of um, using a use effect, we are going to use the use effect with a component will unmount. So if we come over here, we can get rid of all of this and leave in an empty array. And now we can make a return function be an empty arrow function. And in here we can console the log and say, we, um, the return is being ran. And note in the official documentation, this is known as the cleanup function. So if you were to put a return and let's see if I can quickly find an example in here. So, I don't know why they don't have really good examples, but for example, here you can see in this use effect, they have a return and this will specifically run when the component is unmounting and only when it is unmounting. So you can see here, I'll go ahead and refresh and I show it, it'll still run the first time. Anything that's inside the use effect, um, other than the return, um, if there is an empty array here, will still run the first time. But if I were to you know, go ahead and update all these counts and stuff like that, you'll see the use effect is not running because we have an empty array passed in here. And now if I were to hide the counter, which would unrender it, you will see that it first runs the return function. So if I click it, it'll say the return is being ran. And that is known as a component will unmount. Now you might be wondering, okay, so let's say we take an example like this, a simple example, and we just don't pass in an array at all. What is going to happen? Well, you're going to see what happens is if I were to go ahead and refresh this now, it will literally update no matter what on everything. So this is sort of the equivalent of passing in every single possible thing in your component into that array, which is pretty dangerous because that means no matter what happens to the components, you know, in most components, you're not just gonna have two state variables, you might have, you know, Redux things, you might have props coming in. Every time any one of those things updates, you're gonna have this use effect running. So it's very important um, when you have a use effect unless you wanted to update literally no matter what updates you want to add that array parameter and you want to put only the things you actually want it to run on update work so for example the count or for example count two um, which is really important so you can see here those are the three main ways to get the lifecycle methods inside of use effects and of course you can do things like for example combine them so let's so for example if I were to make this dependent on count 
and we will see that it is simply just working as we know as a component uh, will update. Every time I click it, it'll give us this. But now let's try adding a return here and see what happens. So you can see here in this return, in this cleanup function, all I'm doing is I'm pretty much saying I want to console log this every time. Um, we are quote returning. Now you might think that this will only run when the component unmounts. However, now that we have added something to the array in our use effect, it will no longer run as a component will unmount. And instead, it will sort of run like a component will unmount specifically for every time any variable inside of our array changes. So I'm going to open that counter and now keep a close eye on what the count is. If we increment the count to one, you will see here, it will get the message that the count, uh, that first we will get the message that the, we are in the cleanup and the count is zero. And then we get the message that the count has updated. And essentially when you put a variable here, this cleanup method will now run for that variable changing. So the exact events of what happened, the exact order of events was we updated, we reloaded our application and we showed the counter. And we are now in this state where we have already run this console statement saying the count has updated. And right now the count is currently zero. When we now change the count before it fully changes, we are going to run this cleanup function. And this cleanup function is going to happen right before the count updates. And that's why when you console log it, it will say that the count is zero and not one. And why after that, this use effect will rerun saying that the count is updated. And to make this even a bit more obvious, we can go ahead and um, add the count variable in this first um, in this first use effect. So we can clearly see uh, what it is. So we show the counter and it says the count is updated to zero. We are in the first run of it. Now when I click increment count, the cleanup will run and that's why it'll say the count is zero. And then the use effect will rerun because the count has changed. And we can see here the count is now updated to one. And if I were to click increment the count again, you will see that the cleanup runs first and it is set, it'll say that the count is one and then the count will update to two. So that cleanup will now not, um, will not be known as a quote component will unmount anymore, but it will be tied to the variable inside of the array. So that's one of the complex ways that you can combine a cleanup function with a standard, you know, use effect made to update, um, to run on update. Now let's talk about how we can make an API request using the use effect hook. And in production level applications, you should all know that a lot of the times you're not going to be making API level requests um, at the use effect level. A lot of the times you're going to have something like a Redux store and your Redux store is going to hook up to Redux Saga or something that's going to make the API request for you, which we'll go over in future videos. But a lot of people like using use effects to make API requests and it's something that is good for small projects. So let's go ahead and do that. I have found a really nice fake um, API over here called JSON placeholder dot typicode.com. I'll link this in the description in case you can't read that. But essentially, it has a bunch of different fake APIs that you can hit that just return some basic JSON data. And the one we're going to look at is their to-dos endpoint. And you can see when you hit the to-dos endpoint, you just get a bunch of um, to-dos. So for example, each to-do will have a user ID that I guess is assigned to that to-do, an ID, the title of that to-do, and whether or not it is completed. And you can see there's like quite a lot. If we scroll all the way down, there's 200 to-dos. Um, so we're going to hit this endpoint um, and get this JSON and just simply display it. And in order to do that, I've simply made a very basic uh, function over here. And we're going to use the component did mount hook. Now, the reason we want to use the component did mount in our use effect um, as opposed to anything else is because we only want to load this data one time. And we don't want to be making, you know, multiple different requests. Um, <laughs> Uh, you, to get the exact same data every single time a variable in our component updates. So what we are going to do first is we're going to install a dependency called Axios, which is a nice little library that sort of wraps around um, uh, API calls um, and Ajax calls. And I like using Axios a lot. Um, and I have a very brief example of how to use it in case anyone is sort of new to it. Essentially, all we are going to do, and you can even see this example that has React in it. They're using it in a component did mount. But essentially, Essentially, all you do is you import it and then you type axios.get, you type in the endpoint, and then you just have a dot then, which allows you to do whatever you want with that data. So 
essentially what we are going to do is I have a state variable here and I'll close the um, this over here now. I have a state variable called to do's which we are going to store all the to do's in and what we're going to do is we're just going to have a compo a use effect here and we're going to go ahead and import Axios Oops. okay we're going to go ahead and import Axios and we are adding an empty array here because we want it to only run one time when the component mounts. And what we're going to do is essentially we're going to take that call and add our own URL in there. So let's go ahead and delete this. We're going to say Axios.get. Oh, I spelled it wrong up here. Okay. We're going to say Axios.get and we can go ahead um, and replace the URL. So let's get the URL of this. Oops. And this code sandbox will be in the description as well. So you can straight up come to all this code and play around with it. You can fork it onto your own account, play around with it. So, and then what we're going to do in the then with the response data, we're going to say, you know, const to do's is going to be equal to the response data. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to set to do's. We should call this to do's to the to do's, um, you know, response or let's call it like, yeah, response to do's. So this is the to do's that we're getting from our endpoint. And we're going to set our state variable to do's equal to that. And just to walk you through the flow of exactly what is happening, let's take one more last look at the code. What is happening is our to do list is being rendered. And as soon as it gets rendered, this use effect will run. And when the use effect runs, it will make an Axio get request to this API or this endpoint. And then after the request is done, it will, it has a callback function with a variable called res, which stands for response. And all we are doing is setting essentially the to do's in our state variable equal to whatever the response data is from that endpoint. And now this to do's um, variable state variable should have all 200 to do's in there. So what we can do if we wanted to, for example, display all of it is we could just map through it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to um, make a conditional to make sure that we are only mapping through it is if it is defined because in the initial state of our component, we are sending it to undefined before this use effect um, gets a chance to run with the API request because this actually takes some time. So the next thing we're just going to simply do a simple map through it. So we're going to do dot map. Um, and let's say, for example, let's just pull out, let's say like the user ID. And the user ID and let's say like, uh, what else do they have? The title, um, the title equals to do. And let's just return something really simple, like, you know, like an H uh, five that says uh, the title of the to do. And then an H six that says like um, assign to user and then the user ID that the to-do is uh, assigned to. Okay, and let's wrap some fragments around it so we have a top level. And let's go ahead and refresh that. And you can see here, all right, it's right, we're gonna get that key warning so we can just go ahead and like, let's turn this into a div and let's say the key is equal to the, and let's get the actual ID from it. Um, if you've watched our mapping videos, you'll know why we have to assign a key. But let's go ahead and now refresh this. And here we go. Now React stops yelling at us. So, and let's make this to-do list in H1 just so it looks a tiny bit easier to understand. Cool. So now you can see what is happening here is we have our to-do list. And for every single to-do list, um, for every single to-do in that list, we essentially are showing the title and which user it is assigned to. Obviously, you can make this look a lot better, but the purpose of this video isn't for aesthetics. Um, we're just learning how to use the use effect with an API request, and that is essentially uh, how that works. And if we wanted to um, even look a bit further, we could console.log the to-dos variable. And you'll see when it first rendered, you'll get probably two undefines and then two times where it um, renders uh, where the variables are actually things. All right, let's go ahead and refresh that. So you'll see here, it'll, you know, the first couple of times that this component renders, um, you'll get undefined, but then it finally makes the API request and updates the variable. And then you see the variable is updated to all 200 of these to-dos um, 
in our uh, response that we get back. But that is pretty much it. And if you found value in this video, um, I know it might be a bit complex. And in the next couple of videos, we're going to make some examples combining everything we learned together. But hopefully, if you found value, please consider subscribing or leaving a comment. I can't tell you how much it helps with the YouTube algorithm. Liking helps as well. And I try to read every single comment that you guys leave. So thank you so much for watching. Hope you're all staying safe. And I'll see you guys in the next video.